I mean, I have some scars. I know I have like one that used to be here that was on my arm. It was when I was a kid, I was playing with some knives, not very cool. I was probably about eight years old and I was trying to cut a rope and it slipped and it really cut my hand right here. And there's not really, uh, I just, you know, probably about a year or two years ago, I noticed, you know, hey, it's not there anymore. What's up, fasters? Welcome to another video. I am Dr. Legrand, and if you are new here, we talk about fasting here on our channel. Everything about fasting, dry fasting, water fasting, intermittent fasting, other decalcification videos. So if you are new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you do not miss anything else coming to the future. So let's get right into the video. Here we go. So today we're going to talk about follow-up. I know there's been a big, huge demand for a lot of people on how fasting can help with reducing scar tissue. And I know that you've been trying to look for more information, more information about this, and frankly, there's not a whole lot of research when it comes to fasting and reducing scar tissue. Now, I know a lot of people in this community have actually benefited from reducing stretch marks, other scar tissue when they do implement prolonged fasting. So I want to discuss a little bit of the research that I have found that can have a little potential light when it comes to reducing scar tissue when we do prolonged fasts. First, let's talk about really what does reduce internal scar tissue? What's going on in the body when you're doing a prolonged fast? Well, when we remember when you are fasting, you push yourself to a ketosis state, start breaking down the fat cells, breaking down the ketone bodies, but eventually the body needs a little bit more. This is what we call non-essential proteins. So these non-essential proteins are kind of things that really the body doesn't need in the body. It could be internal scar tissue or external scar tissue, or it could be just cells, debris in the body that the body just essentially doesn't need. And so it starts using that as a source of food to start getting rid of that because there's no need for it. But I know what you guys are all asking. You're like, okay, Dr. Legrand, when does the body actually start breaking it down? And I, you've heard in my comments, I've talked about, it really depends on the person. Everybody is different. So you gotta understand that everybody is unique. Everybody is an individual and everybody's body is different. So it really depends on the person. But I do wanna shed some light on some research. First, let's talk a little bit about a little bit more science. So I'm gonna go in a little bit more depth here. So bear with me, hold on here. So another interesting thing that we have to look at is sure the body is starting to break down non-essential proteins, but another interesting thing that happens during fasting is something such as what we call as protein kinase A, a particular enzyme that has to regulate with uh, proteins, as well as insulin-like growth factors. Those two things, when they are elevated, that can cause a problem as far as has shown in research to contribute to tumors, other health concerns. So those tumors, of course, leading to important cancer that has shown that those increased levels can be a detriment. But with fasting, those levels will usually be depleted. And when there is a depletion of protein kinase as well as insulin growth-like factors, it has shown that it will trigger regeneration. So this triggering of regeneration of cells will increase such as microphages, which is essentially our white blood cells that uh, can eat debris and unnecessary invaders that come into our body. So essentially trying to reducing such as those non-essential proteins like the scar tissue, but also even it can, it also triggers increase of natural killer cells, which is very important when it comes to cancer cells to be able to reduce the tumors because of increasing T cells and natural killer cells that do happen when we decrease the protein kinase A's and also IGF ones. By doing that with fasting, that can do that, okay? So just understanding that concept there when it comes to possibly reducing internal scar tissue, but not only that, but also potentially for prevention of cancer and reducing our tumors that are unnecessary types of tumors in our system that we can reduce when we are doing fasting. So now that we got all that science out of the way, let's talk a little bit about the research. So there is a research article that I think was published about in 2014 that actually is focused a little bit more on again about the tumor cells, but it also has a little bit have to do with scar tissue. 
And this study was done with mice. And what they found with a group of mice is what I just talked about before. Through fasting, they were able to reduce protein kinase A, as well as insulin-like growth factors, be able to reduce that to help regenerate the microphages, natural killer cells, things like that. But along with that, what they found is that what Abel was able to increase this, they found between about 48 to 120 hours was able to stimulate this process. So that's two to five days long of prolonged fasting with mice. Now again, this is with mice, so these are all, you know, of course, just hypothetical when it comes to humans. So it's still very experimental. So mice that were fasting with the 48 to 120 hour frame, they were able to reduce pro-growth like signaling. Now that has to do a lot with cancer tumors to be able to see the pro-growth like signaling. So that was the kind of benefit with that. But they also were able to determine when they were able to fast this long period of time that it did reduce growth of tumors. The sizes of the tumors were able to be reduced, whether they're benign or not, or malignant. So I know it's not specific when it comes to really internal scar tissue because frankly there's not any research out there, at least from what I've seen, only from my own personal patients that have experience with reducing internal and external scar tissue, as well as people here on the community have stressed a lot that they have been able to benefit from that. Now I know for me personally, again, I mean I've had some scars, I know I have like one that used to be here that was on my arm. It was when I was a kid, I was playing with some knives, not very cool, I was probably about eight years old and I was trying to cut a rope and it slipped and it really cut my hand right here and there's not really, uh, I just, you know, probably about a year or two years ago, I noticed, you know, hey, it's not there anymore. So really determine how long does external scar tissues take. For me, sometimes you just don't realize it's, it's gone and then all of a sudden because you've been implementing a lot of fasting, all of a sudden it just disappears. But it just really kind of depends on each person. But for me personally, I've noticed some other, other types of things like moles, not moles, but even just kind of warts and other things that kind of just have gone away because as I implement more and more fasting. So it really just, just depends. But that's just my personal story. And I know there's lots of people here in the community that have experienced and they've have kind of measured a time frame to really kind of look at particularly how long it took them. But again, it's always depends on the person. Now, maybe the research will come around where they'll do specific studies on scar tissue. But as far as this is the closest I can get, now, if you are interested in finding out more about this, I will keep you up to date as far as what the research comes when it comes to internal scar tissue. But the thing that was going to be important is that what they found also in the study is that it was more mimicking, that they were able to mimic this process because they were also testing in this these studies and even another study that I looked at, looking at specifically chemotherapy patients, that they found when they would fast, beforehand it was able to really increase the immune system but also prevent from damaging of the body because chemotherapy can be have a lot of issues of scarring in the body but to be able to help prevent that as well as to have a quicker response time of regenerating and rebuilding the body after the chemo treatment so that's another interesting study in there itself so that can really even help benefit from a come to scar tissue so what's important to realize is that you can also mimic this. It doesn't necessarily require that you always have to do extensive long fasts, but you can do things such as kind of like how it showed in the study where maybe a 48 to a, you know, a three day fast instead of having to do a seven day long fast, but doing it more frequently where you're doing a 24 to 48 hour water fast more on a weekly basis versus just doing only a long period of a seven day plus fast once or twice a year. So I would recommend, you know, really trying to mimic that whole process because what this will do is also it's going to increase autophagy. We've known that autophagy levels do increase 400% when you hit in that 24 to 48 hour window frame of fasting. So by doing that, that can still eliminate, uh, can trigger 
our immune system as well as trigger it by getting rid of old debris and cells because we're increasing a lot of the microphages, natural killer cells that I just talked about before. So if you really are interested in trying to reduce scar tissue, start, I would recommend trying to start first doing the shorter fast more frequently versus just only doing a long fast for just maybe once or twice out of the year. So I hope you guys like this video. If you guys liked it, give us a big thumbs up. Go ahead and share with your family and friends. And as always, if you are new here on our channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button over here and hit the notification bell if you want more tips and tricks on fasting videos. That's what we talk about here on this channel as well as some other health tips. And then of course, I'll leave some other links over here of some other videos if you have not seen them already. So until next time, guys, I love you guys. See you next time. Dr. LeGrand signing out. Thanks.